The observatory was built in 1891-1892, designed by Charles H. Martrobe, 1834-1902, and built by local contractor Cornelius Sheehan, the tower took six months to complete. Its design accents reflect the Gilded Age interest in Asian architecture, and for that reason, it became known colloquially as the Pagoda, built of iron, glass and wood and standing 60 feet tall on Hampstead Hill, which was a key battlement during the Battle for Baltimore in 1814. The high promontory allows a breathtaking 360 degree view. From the top of the tower one can view downtown, Baltimore's many neighborhoods, the Patapsco River, the Key Bridge and Fort McHenry. Over time and due to natural decay, vandalism, and lack of maintenance funds, the observatory was closed to the public in 1951 for the first in a series of partial renovations. By the 1990s, the building was in serious disrepair. Demolition was proposed as an option, but with the support of the community and city officials, the creation of the 1998 master plan for Patterson Park called for the complete restoration of the observatory. This project was guided by the then newly formed Friends of Patterson Park, in partnership with Baltimore City's Department of Recreation and Parks and many neighborhood volunteers. Completed in the spring of 2002, the observatory now stands as an iconic structure for Patterson Park in Baltimore City and signifies the renaissance of the communities around Patterson Park. It is also the location of many programs and events, such as the Friends of Patterson Park Summer Concert Series and our Holiday Winter Lights at the Observatory, or Dubin's Family Programs, Tour Den Park's Water Stop, one of the sites of Avim's Kinetic Sculpture Race Obstacles, and much, much more. The Observatory is operated maintained and staffed by the Friends of Patterson Park and its volunteer docents. American city of Baltimore, Maryland, is notorious for its crime rate, which ranks well above the national average. Violent crime spiked in 2015 after the death of Freddie Gray on the 19th of April, 2015, which touched off riots and an increase in murders. The city recorded 348 homicides in 2019, a number second only to the number recorded in 1993 when the population was nearly 125,000 higher. On the 19th of April, 2015, which touched off riots and a crime wave that has resulted in an increase in murders. The city recorded a total of 344 homicides in 2015, a number second only to the number recorded in 1993 when the population was 100,000 higher. This was the highest murder rate on a per capita basis ever recorded. When contemplating a move to Baltimore, Maryland, it's crucial to consider all aspects of the city. Baltimore has some wonderful features but it's also known for its high poverty and crime rates. Therefore, evaluating areas such as Grove Park and Pulaski among others that are deemed the 10 most dangerous neighborhoods can be insightful.
Baltimore, MD has a much higher rate of violent crime and property crime than the US average. The violent crime rate is 77.8 compared to an average of 22.7 nationwide, and the property crime rate is 67.6 compared to an average of 35.4 nationally. This means that Baltimore residents are nearly four times more likely to be victims of violent crime than the rest of the country, and almost twice as likely to be affected by property crimes. Unfortunately, this means that citizens of Baltimore are facing a serious threat from violence and theft every day. Crime is ranked on a scale of 1, low crime, to 100, high crime. Baltimore violent crime is 77.8. The US average is 22.7. Baltimore property crime is 67.6. The US average is 35.4. Washington Monument and Mount Vernon plays with their rich history have an important place in the cultural development of Baltimore and the nation. For over 200 years, Mount Vernon Place has contributed to life in the city of Baltimore. When a group of private Baltimore citizens came together in 1809 to erect the first monument to George Washington in the country, they likely did not know that its construction in the woods of Revolutionary War here at John Eagerhart's Belvedere Estate would reorient the development of their city and create a place as unique as Mount Vernon Place. For two centuries residents and visitors have toured the monument and climbed to its top, and the surrounding squares of Mount Vernon Place have hosted important civic events. The Washington Monument, the centerpiece of Mount Vernon Place, is the first memorial to the nation's first president, George Washington. The cornerstone was laid on the 4th of July, 1815, and the stonework of the monument completed in 1829. It was partially for paid for by a public lottery, as was common at the time. The column is a simplified version of the winning design by Robert Mills, who later designed the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., embracing changes Mills made before the cornerstone was laid. The statue atop the monument depicts George Washington resigning his commission, an event that took place in 1783 in the Maryland State House in Annapolis. The column rises 162 feet from the ground, and the statue of Washington adds another 16 feet. The land on which the monument stands was donated by John Eager Howard, a Baltimore Revolutionary War hero. There remains no more tangible evidence of Baltimore's transformation from industrial port town to modern city and tourist destination than the Inner Harbor, which welcomed more than 14 million business and leisure travelers to Charm City in 2012. 
Redevelopment of the inner harbour began under former Mayor Theodore Mickledon in the mid-1960s, culminating with the christening of Harbour Place in 1980 by then-Mayor William Donald Schaffer. By the late 1700s, the Maryland Colony and Port of Baltimore were national leaders in the shipbuilding industry. The famous Baltimore Clippers, appearing not long after the American Revolutionary War, were built for speed and use in the trading industry, not all of which was legal, and by the mid-19th century, the oyster canning industry, jump-started by the owners of the Tinker patent, was spawning a canning boom around the port, particularly in Canton. In 1976, Coinciding with America's bicentennial, historic tall ships visited the Inner Harbor and the Maryland Science Center opened its doors, bringing millions of tourists to the city. A few years later, Harbor Place, considered a model of redevelopment, opened and the Inner Harbor became the hub of the city's tourism industry. It remains so today, even as the area expands with mixed-use commercial developments in nearby neighborhoods such as Harbor East, Fells Point, and Tide Point.